Often we struggle to move forward from disappointment because we have not forgiven. With your Bibles in Philippians 3, we are in lesson six of our teaching on how to move forward. And we're using Philippians chapter 3 as our guidelines to help us. And in verse number 13, Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the, uh, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, that word means mature, be thus minded, and if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Church, we have learned over the last six weeks that we're just learning uh, how to have a continued press. We're learning how to continue to reach forward. We're learning how to forget those things that are behind. We've learned over the last several weeks that consistently making progress can be difficult. You know, it's easy to start things, but sometimes it's hard to continue to make consistent process. And, and I don't want those who I love, the people that I pastor, those who I have oversight over, I, I don't want us to ever get stuck in a place in our heart and in our mind where we're revisiting the same things over and over again and not moving forward. And, and, and so I made a statement, or I've been making a statement nearly every week, and I will make it again. If you are born of God's Spirit, that is, you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, and you are filled with God's Spirit, that is, the Holy Spirit dwells down on the inside of you, and you know that you have the power of God working on the inside of you, and you are applying the Word of God to your life to the best of your ability. You are doing Romans chapter 12. You're, you're trying to renew your mind. You're doing Corinthians. You're, you're trying to bring every thought into captivity and make it obey the Word of God. And you're doing the things that you believe you need to do in the natural, but you still feel that you cannot move forward, that you're stuck in the place where you are. You may need some additional help. Now, that additional help may mean that you may just need to get the subscription service. And you may need to go back and get some teachings and spend some time with them. It may mean that you need a phone call with a minister or with your pastor to just kind of walk through some things to see if you can get some tools that will help you. It may mean that you have something going on in medically with you, in your health, in your body, or in your mind, that, that just a consultation with your primary doctor could help you. You know, uh, I was thinking about this. Uh, we, I was talking to someone in, in an unrelated way. But you know, sometimes we have prescriptions for one thing that messes up another thing. You, you know, you might be taking some medicine for your blood pressure or your diabetes or something else, and it could be messing you up in other ways. You know, sometimes, listen, if you can't uh, get a good night's sleep, sometimes it's hard to get up the next day and make progress. And, and sometimes it's just a simple matter of talking to someone about what's going on in the natural that will help me naturally and will help me spiritually. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of talking to somebody. Sometimes it's an understanding that I'm getting older. How many of you know that birthdays are not really birthdays because you're not getting closer to birth? Amen. And with that birthday came some changes. Some things that were up went down and some things that were down went up. And, and now you're a little bit not the way you used to be. And, and just understanding where you are in age and stage of life can help you to get to the place where you need to be. So sometimes we can feel like we're doing all that we need to do but we wake up and we realize I'm not really growing, I'm not really developing, I'm not really making progress. Well, just don't stay stuck. Be begin a process to find out what's missing and what you need so that you can move forward, amen? And so the intent of this teaching is to help us. I wanna help us to move forward in the instructions of God, those spiritual, natural, and financial instructions that God has given all of us. I wanna help us to grow and to develop. I wanna help us to continue to make progress. The purpose of this teaching is threefold. I, I want us to glorify God 
I want every person that I pastor who I love and I care about, I want you to glorify God. I want you to honor Him with your life. I, 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 want, you to make, I want you to remain in His will. I, I want you to remain in His will. And I want you to mature. And the goal of this teaching is simple. The goal is to reach the mark. To reach the mark. That is the will of God for this and every dispensation of time in your life. That is the will of God for this and every dispensation of time in your life. And so we've got five objectives that we're looking at over the next several weeks. I want to teach us how to move forward from our old life. I want to teach us how to move forward from loss. I want to teach us how to move forward from disappointment. I want to teach us, fourth, how to move forward when we miss God. And I want to teach us, fifth and finally, how to move forward from a stagnant place. So I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter number five, and I want us to continue in the subtitle that we were in when I left, which is how to move forward from disappointment. How to move forward from disappointment. In life, we will have disappointments. In life, we will have disappointments. And disappointments are caused by things that we feel that we could not control. So that's primarily where our focus is. You know, those things that happen to us in our lives that we feel like we had no say over. Because if we could have chosen, we would have chosen for that not to happen to us or for us not to have to gone through whatever it is we went through. You know, how we handle disappointment is essential. How we handle disappointment is essential. And, and disappointment can definitely cause you to get stuck. You know, because sometimes disappointments can start to pile on top of each other. You know, a bad week turns into a bad month, it turns into a bad year, it turns into just a bad season. And, and, and when it starts to pile on us like that, sometimes we can get stuck in a place and we're not really making progress. You know, uh, th disappointment can be like taking punches from a fighter. You know, uh, you, you take the first one and you, you, you're still pretty good, but before you can get yourself together, then you take another one. And the next thing you know, you can't tell which is up, down, left, right, you're disoriented, and, and you find yourself stuck. Disappointment, by definition, is sadness or displeasure caused by non-fulfillment of our hopes and expectations. Disappointment is sadness or displeasure that's caused by non-fulfillment of our hopes or expectations. Notice the key word in there is our hopes. And in other words, nobody promised us that we weren't, as a matter of fact, Jesus promised us just the opposite. He said, you're going to go through things. Paul told us endure hardness. I don't know how you define hardness, but I define hardness as not easy. The Bible lets us know over and over again that we're going to go through difficulties. We're going to face disappointments. We're, we're going to have to deal with challenges. But yet sometimes uh, when things don't meet our hopes and our expectations, we find ourselves uh, with sadness and we find ourselves in a, a place of displeasure, but, but it's because our expectations were not met. Amen? Sometimes uh, when we are uh, disappointed, it can produce hurt. It can produce discouragement. It can cause discontentment. You know, we can be disappointed because of past experiences, things that have happened in our past that we just did not expect. And because it happened, we're sad. We can't move forward. Sometimes we're disappointed because of present situations. You know, we just don't want to be in the situation that we're in. If, if you've never had a time in your life when you were not in a situation that you didn't want to be in, you are either very, very young or very, very naive. But for the rest of us, we've had times in our lives where our present situation is just not what we wanted it to be. It's not, not what we hoped it would be. You know, I think for all of us, somewhere in between March of 2020 and today, we've had something pandemic-related that has put us in a situation where we didn't, that was not, this was not my hopes, it was not my expectation. Amen? I think about all the things uh, that my wife and I, spiritually, financially, naturally, 
maritally, for our children, for the ministry that we had planned to do over the last 18 months that are now just sheets of paper sitting in a box somewhere because the pandemic came and changed everything. And you know, that can be disappointing because it wasn't what I hoped, it wasn't what I expected. And listen, some of the things I thought I planned, I thought I was hearing from God when I wrote it down. You know, it wasn't like I was just pulling things out there. I prayed, I sought him, I said, oh, this will be good and put it all together. And then the pandemic hit. And that can cause some sadness. It can cause some disappointment. We have college students. They've been waiting 18 years to go to college and then the pandemic hit. Now they're sitting in their mama's house on a computer going to class, that's definitely not what they anticipated. Amen, that can, that can mess with you. Sometimes we can have disappointment because of our perceived future. And what I mean by that is things that have happened to us in the past or what we're dealing with in the present has caused us to think that our future doesn't look good or it doesn't look how we hoped or it doesn't look how we expected. And so we have to deal with each and every disappointment as one of my young adults said, we have to learn how to deal with these things and move on. Amen? Because life moves on, and people move on, and we have to move on, and the will of God moves forward. So there are three things that we said we were going to look at in this subtitle. The first is that I have to reconcile my situation with the truth. The second thing we said we have to do is we must forgive. And thirdly, we have to encourage ourselves. And so let's quickly recap that first point. We said to deal with disappointment, I have to reconcile my situation with the truth. I have to reconcile my situation with the truth. And so I gave you a list of things, and I, let's go back through them quickly. I said that we all experience sufferings. You know, when I was growing up, I was a uh, things always happen to me person. You know, that was, that was my go-to line in myself. You know, if everybody was uh, invited to go somewhere and my parents said I couldn't go, it always happens to me. You know, if something happened at school, it always happens to me. You know, I, that was my, my go-to for everything that happened in my life, that I was the first person that it happened to, I'm the only person that it happened to, and it always happens to me, and nobody else has to deal with all of my problems and all of my disappointments but me. Now, uh, what I didn't realize was when I was growing up, all of what I thought were my problems and all of my disappointments were basically worthless things. They didn't amount to anything. They really weren't important, but they were important to me. How many of us know that we can be disappointed by something that in the truth is really not even worth being disappointed about? We can be disappointed about things that in truth, they're not even really worthy of being disappointed about. When my, when my daughter, my oldest daughter, was little, she would sometimes ask for, you know, can, I go, can we go to McDonald's or can we do this or can we do that? And we would do what all parents do. No, <laughs> we're not doing that. And I would look back in the back in the car seat and her little eyes would be just watering up with tears. And I said, don't you drop a tear. She would look at me and said, this is not tear worthy. It's not tear worthy. I said, if you're going to drop a tear about this, what, what's going to happen when something really big happens in your life? So just suck it up. Now, she was just a little girl. I don't even think she really understood all I was saying, but she'd be back. <laughs> See, because I knew in life you're going to have bigger disappointments than not going to McDonald's. You're going to have bigger disappointment than not getting the pair of shoes that you want or not, not being able to hang out with your friends. So, so I want you to learn to suck these little disappointments up so that when a big disappointment comes, you, you'll be able to handle it. And, and my daughter, she's so cute. When, when we had our, 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 our second child and she was just a baby, she was in the car seat next to her. And, you know, babies, they hungry. They need to be fed. They started cry, she started crying. And, and my, my daughter looked over and she said, it's not tear worthy, and you don't get anything that you cry for. And I said, well, baby, that's, that's a little bit different in her situation. Amen. She, she doesn't have words yet, but she was like, let me train her up quick because she ain't never going to get a bottle. She keep hollering like this. But I had to, you know, I had to clarify with her. Amen. But listen, some, some disappointments, we, we have, listen, some things, when we reconcile it with the truth, we're going to realize it's not even a disappointment. It's not even really a disappointment. But all of us are going to go through, listen, if you live, you're going to go through being treated evil, experience evil. You're going to go through misfortune. You're going to experience calamity. You're going to go through hardship. You're going to have to deal with painful times. That, that's true for all of us. So 
I got to see my situation from God's perspective. What I'm going through is not unique to me. I'm not the only one. We all go through sufferings. Listen, the righteous and the unrighteous. So salvation didn't give you a get out of suffering card. It didn't give you a free pass from the trials of life. It gave you the tools that you need to go through those sufferings and deal with those challenges. I have to reconcile letter B that I have hope or that we have hope. We have hope. You know, when you look at the things in your life that may be disappointing, you have to remember that you have a father that loves you. You have grace that's sufficient for you. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of you. You have Jesus who can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. And he's an intercessor so that you might obtain mercy and find grace to help you. You're in the body of Christ. You, you have a body of believers who have been systematically assembled together so that they can uh, edify and strengthen you. Listen, and you still have time because as long as you have breath in your body, you should always still have hope in your heart. We learn that we can still, uh, that God can still be glorified. No matter what I've gone through, no matter how disappointing it is, I can still honor God with my life if I move forward. We have to reconcile our situation with the truth, which means letter D, we still are in God's plans. Isn't that good news? We're still in God's plans. God has not changed his plans for you. You're still in his plans. I know we've gone through some things and it may be difficult, but we're still in God's plans. And then lastly, we learned the last time I was here is that we are promised victory. We are promised victory. Now, we've got to be steadfast. We've got to be unmovable. We've got to continue abounding in the work of the Lord. We've got to work the works of him that sent us while it's day. We can't get weary in well-doing. But if we do our part, if we, in other words, if we stay in the game, we win. Amen. Now, guaranteed victory doesn't apply if you quit. But, but if you get up every day and press toward the mark, if you get up every day and strive to, toward the mark, God has promised us the victory. But the victory does require that I don't quit. In other words, I can't quit and then say, well, God gave me the victory. No, he gives us the victory because victory implies that you are in the competition. It, it, it implies that you have stayed in the arena. And, and so that brings us to our second point for uh, this subtitle. And the only point we're going to cover tonight, listen, in order to move forward from disappointment, I must forgive. I must forgive. Now, remember in the beginning I said doing all that you need to do. So point number one and point number two, it, you need to know that this is connecting knowledge from a teaching I did in 2020 on how to be restored. And, and, and so I need to also make sure that if I'm struggling to move forward from disappointment, that I, that I go and get that teaching on how to be restored because it will help me in the process, amen? I got to do everything I know to do. And, and so I, this is a lot of connecting knowledge uh, tonight. Now, I'm going to make some statements and I'm going to try to go through them uh, slowly and carefully as you're going to Matthew chapter 6 and I want you to stay with me. Often we struggle to move forward from disappointment because we have not forgiven. Often, we struggle to move forward from disappointment because we have not forgiven. Remember, disappointment is sadness because of my hopes or my expectations uh, not being met. And it's a result of things that I feel happened that I had no control over. And so oftentimes, we struggle to move forward because we haven't forgiven God, even though it wasn't his fault. Amen. Maybe we haven't forgiven a person. If they hadn't said this, if they hadn't done this, if they hadn't treated me the way that they treated me. Listen, we may not have forgiven a group of people. You know, there, there are many people who cannot move forward because they are upset with another group of people. And they feel that group is the reason why they're in the situation that they're in. You know, them white folk, them black folk, them Hispanic folk, 
them Republican folk, them Democratic folk. The, the reason I don't have a job is them Democratic folk came and closed my factory. The reason I can't get ahead is them Republican folk changed the rules. And when they changed the rules, that wrote me out. I can't get ahead because them white folk are always saying something and doing something to keep me back. I can't move forward because all these black folk have moved in. And since they moved in, now I'm dealing with this. I can't move forward because them Hispanic folk have come in, and since them Hispanic folk have gotten here, look at how, uh-oh. Y'all didn't think it was gonna go this way, did you? But it's amazing how we blame groups of people for our disappointments. And we make our disappointments based on what we perceive they did for us. You know, sometimes we cannot forgive family. The family wasn't there the way they should have been there. Mama loved this one better than she loved me. This one was always daddy's favorite. And that's why I couldn't make it through college. Now, daddy was writing tuition checks for everybody, but come on now. Sometimes we have trouble forgiving whole institutions. That's why some of us don't want to get vaccinated. The whole government is out to get me. Sometimes we struggle to forgive people we don't even know, never even met. I'm just disappointed that I never met my father. Now, how do you know that that is negative? How, how do you know that never meeting your parent is negative? What, what about if it turns out that the parent you never met was a child molester? It could be God's mercy and grace that kept that person away from you. And the thing you're disappointed about, God did to be a blessing in your life. I'm just so disappointed that this person, that person, listen, uh, we got people storming capitals, threatening voting officers, doing all of this type, angry, bitter, frustrated, with folk they don't even know because they feel that they did not get their hopes and their expectations, and now they cannot move forward. We are almost a year after an election and we still got people angry and bitter and hostile and something was stole from me. Now watch this. The day after the election, they got up in the same house, out of the same bed, went into the same kitchen, all the same food was in the refrigerator, they ate the same breakfast they all went, went ready would have eaten, they've gone to the same job and their paycheck hadn't changed. But yet they can't move forward because the whole world has changed. Now, some of us were like that four years previous. And you got up in the same bed, in the same house, with the same food and the same paycheck. Nothing in your life really changed. Nothing in your life really changed, except for you didn't get what you expected. And it made you sad, and you got stuck. And life moves on. Come on, y'all. You know, see, we can, we can have unforgiveness because of real and perceived offenses. There's real things that really happen to us. So I'm not minimizing the fact that in life, sometimes people do horrible, terrible, horrific things to us. But sometimes we have unforgiveness and the offense is not even real, it's perceived. Now, if you're married, you don't even need any other further explanation of that because everyone has been uh, offended by perception if you've been married. Some of your best arguments ended with you going to bed saying, I think we both were saying the same thing, but you can't admit that. <laughs> Amen. But when you really go back and think about it, it's like, what was the difference between what they said and what I said? But that's, a, that's another message for another time. Now watch this, unforgiveness can cause anger. It can cause bitterness. And not just with the person you haven't forgiven. It can cause anger and bitterness towards everybody. It can cause a lack of trust. When you can't forgive the last person, it makes it hard for you to trust the next person. It can cause poor relationships. When, when we can't forgive it, it causes us to have poor relationships with others. Unforgiveness can cause health issues, stress, anxiety, high blood pressure, you know, unforgiveness can even cause weight gain. 
you, you holding on to something against somebody and packing on the pounds on yourself, literally, literally carrying baggage. Now, here's some real tragic things. Unforgiveness hinders our prayers. Wow. Unforgiveness damages our relationship with God because if my prayers are hindered, come on now, if my prayers are hindered, then my relationship with God is damaged. Unforgiveness can cause an inability to love, love God and to love others. Unforgiveness can cause me to relive the same things over and over and over again. You know, I've gotten to a point in my life that, you know, unforgiveness really makes the person that you won't forgive the Lord of your life. They, it makes them the Lord of your life. What do you mean, they ain't the Lord of my life? Yes, yes, because the fact that you won't forgive them has cut your relationship between you and your Heavenly Father off, and it's hindered it. And you're making decisions based on how you feel about that person. So you're being led by them and your feelings towards them and not by the Spirit of God that dwells in you. And, you know, at some point, you just have to make a decision that no one and no situation is worth my relationship with God. 